call the meeting to order. Um, roll call, please, Beth. Mr. Bodie. Here. Mrs. Gebhardt. Here. Mr. Gousset. Here. Mrs. Matney. Here. And Ms. Wasmuth. Here. Right. Pledge of Allegiance. With the flag. Oh my goodness, there it is. It's Beth. Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I forgot, I forgot my words. <laughs> we were going really quick through that, too. <laughs> I can't keep up. Okay, um, next on the agenda, our approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, Beth, please call the roll. Mr. Bodie. Aye. Mrs. Gephardt. Aye. Mr. Gousset. Aye. Mrs. Matney. Aye. And Ms. Wasmuth. Aye. I apologize. I didn't ask if anyone had comments, but I'm assuming there were none. Not anymore, you don't. <laughs> All right, quickly moving on to uh, recognition of guests and hearing of the public. Is there anyone from the public here to speak today? All right. Uh, we are going to change our agenda just a bit to um, hear the item under 14A, recommendations for approval, the Grandview Heights Public Library annual tax budget and Board of Trustees reappointment. Um, would you like to say anything? I'm Ryan McDonald, the director of the Grandview Heights Public Library. I think I know all of you, so it's great to see everyone. Uh, congratulations on ending another great school year. Um, before you tonight, we have two items for your consideration. The first is the library's annual tax budget, which we need to submit to our county um, in order to receive our share of the public library fund. So as our taxing authority, we submit that through you. So that was the first order. And then the second order or item is a reappointment of John Evans to our Board of Education, or to our Board of Trustees. We put him on the Board of Ed. Yeah. I almost we said Board of Education. We had one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, his wife used to be on the Board of Education. That's right. Um, and he is a local resident. His children went through the school systems here. Uh, also a local business owner here in Grand Heights. Valued business owner. Grandview person. Yep. Um, I suppose we take the motion in a second and then we can discuss if there's discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so is there a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, any questions? Discussion? Thanks for doing a great job at the library. Thank, Thank you. you. We love great. our library. Yeah. And we love our partnership with the, with the schools here. You guys are doing a great job and we really appreciate it. Yeah, it's an amazing partnership, and yeah. you guys put up with all the kids who come there right after school. <laughs> yes, <wonderful>. we love <laughs> it. We love having them. Yeah. You know, we have them before school, we have them after school. Don't open that up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't open that up before school, they'll be there. We'll have them all summer, too, so we have a great summer, everybody. Too. Thank I you. hope the uh, weather works for music on the lawn one of these days. But I know, I'm one for three, but <laughs> next week, it'll be better. Yep, very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for all, all the right. work. Uh, Beth, could you please call the roll? Mr. Bodie? Aye. Mrs. Gephardt? Aye. Mr. Gousset? Aye. Mrs. Matney? Aye. And Ms. Wasman? Aye. All right, next is the welcoming of new staff members. So I'm just going to say a few words. <clears throat> First off, I want to extend on behalf of the Board of Education and uh, all of our staff in Grandview Heights a heartfelt congratulations. We have among us today uh, many of our new hires. And as probably all of you remember, we have a rather thorough and comprehensive hiring process. <laughs> I do think as superintendent, hiring uh, staff is one of the most important and impactful things that a superintendent can do. And so I, we, take that as an opportunity and we do take it very serious. I share that with you only to say congratulations. You all, each of you, have earned the positions that uh, you will be working in. And we are so very excited to have each of you as part of our Grandview Heights family. I will say, um, shockingly, I'm about to complete my ninth year here, and I've had an opportunity to work in a myriad of other districts. And I will tell you, this is one of the finest, best, most family-oriented districts that I've ever worked in. It is very much a place where you get back what you invest. And uh, I'm very confident that each of you will realize similarly what I have, that this is a wonderful place to work and live. And uh, remember, service above self, 
uh, kids matter most, and the rest will fall in place. So with that, <clears throat> I know Lisa is going to do a, a little introduction uh, for some Stevenson folks, and then I'm going to ask each of you to just say a few words, if you'd like. You don't have to, <laughs> but if you'd like just to stand up and introduce yourself, tell the board what it is you're going to be teaching, and maybe a little bit about yourself. It doesn't have to be long, but you can talk as long as you'd like. Um, <laughs> they very much, Grandview's very small, and so they like to be able to put a face with the name as well. So this is equally as important for them. All right. I'm Lisa Sullivan, the principal at Stevenson Elementary, and this year we had quite a lot of change happen at Stevenson. It was bittersweet. Three of our amazing teachers did retire at the end of this past school year, but I'm very excited because we have some amazing new staff members who will be joining us. So we have a new kindergarten teacher, Kelly Hare, who's coming to us um, by way of Upper Arlington and um, formerly with New Albany. And then we also have a new intervention specialist, Sophie Turner, who was actually a student teacher for one of our current intervention specialists, Hope McDonald. So she earned this position the hard way. <laughs> she had a year-long interview. And then we will also have a new first grade teacher, Emily Sima, who isn't here tonight, so, but. Excellent. Now, b before we go to the next building, do any of you want to say anything? There's no <laughs> pressure. Um, I'm Kelly Hare, and I'll be teaching uh, kindergarten. I'm super excited to join Grandview, um, and I come with about 10 years of experience from I was in New Albany, and then I stayed home for five years with my own three children. And once I started subbing, I was like, I'm ready to be just back in. And I took a maternity leave in Upper Arlington and just loved it in kindergarten, and then to see a spot open in Grandview, which was one of my hopeful schools when I first graduated uh, college. And to see that and then be here, and I'm just so happy to have the opportunity to join the Grandview family. So thank you. Thanks. Welcome. Thanks. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Grandview was my hopeful school, and I just graduated college, and I just did. And I am over the moon that I got the position here, and it's been so nice to get to know my kids. And now I'm working this summer with ESY, and I get to know their parents, and it's all. Extended school year. Yes. Because <laughs> um, I'm an intervention specialist, so I work in special ed, so some of my kids get summer services. And it's been absolutely amazing to get to know their families, too, and everyone here really is family-oriented. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> with that I'd like to introduce Isabel Moore and Anna Roth I see both of them here and uh, again welcome would either of you like to say anything Go for it. hi everyone my name is Anna Roth and I actually was a student teacher here not last year but the year before that um, before I went into teaching I had a previous but short career in the nonprofit sector and teaching was something that always like haunted me in the back of my head and so I went back to school um, I went to Ohio State to get my master's of education and got placed here um, under Laura Turner and Emily Meister and when I left it felt like I uh, was laid off because I just felt like this place was home um, but I was at Worthington Kilbourne High School last year and had an awesome year um, I feel like my tagline has become I like kids and I love them like I just enjoy them and I also uh, deeply care for them and so I'm really excited to be back at Grandview and so thank you so much for welcoming me back yeah. awesome. you get several of our kids next year so hopefully they're real good for you oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We knew. <laughs> Just say it. I think you'll have four of their kids. Yeah. I'm not joking. No, not even a little bit. Just, I'm just letting you know. The fact that she countered back with you, I'm like hired. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm good with this. Hi, I'm Isabel Maurer. Um, I'm the new sixth grade ELA teacher. Um, I come to you from Mount Vernon. I'm from Columbus, went to Hilliard City Schools, went to Capitol University here in Bexley, um, and graduated in 2021 and got an opportunity in Mount Vernon. Um, I loved my time there teaching sixth grade ELA, but my fiance and I wanted to get back to Columbus, start a, our own unit of family, and um, be close to our own family. So when this position opened, I was so excited. Um, Grandview is known to be one of the best districts and I 
your, the process was long and, and a little strenuous, but <laughs> man, that call made my my whole my whole spring. So um, I'm so excited to invest in this community, put roots down, and really um, be a, be a part of Grandview. So thanks so much for the opportunity. Excellent. Yeah. Rob, do you want to introduce the last one? Absolutely. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, it is my honor to uh, introduce Wendy Karcher. Did I pronounce that correctly? That was good. We haven't said her last name yet. Um, <laughs> Wendy's going to be with us this year because we have a teacher on leave, so she's going to fill several uh, different roles, um, some of which I think we explained, but some will be a surprise. <laughs> um, we, we put Wendy through several rounds of, of very difficult questions, and um, through it all, she kept the focus on students, and so we were really impressed with her. Um, it was all about all of her answers were what's best for students. Um, I would tell you more about her, but she was whispering that she wanted to come up here and talk, so I, I'm going to let her do that right now. Hello, my name is Wendy Karcher, and I come to Ohio from Arkansas. I got my Master's of Education in Special Education at the University of Arkansas, and this is about my third career in my lifetime thus far, but this one is one fueled by um, a lot of love and passion. Um, my oldest son, I was diagnosed with autism at the age of three, and um, as soon as I was a scientist before this, and scientists love to discover and research, and as soon as that happened, we dove headfirst into research and going to and getting as much information as we could, and in the process, I decided, why not? Let's get a master's degree in special education. <laughs> um, and as Mr. Brown said, I will be at the high school most of the time, but I might be at the middle school, I might be at the elementary school. I'd like to think of myself as a chameleon, and I will just blend in and do whatever is needed uh, to the best of my absolute ability. And I am so grateful that y'all gave me the opportunity to work at Grandview, because like everybody has said, this is well, like a, one of the best districts in the entire state, and I'm entirely grateful for you giving me the opportunity. Oh, and I substituted for two years in, Ohio, in the Upper Arlington, and I was at Grandview Middle School once um, for the two years while getting my license transferred and everything. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome <clears throat> to everybody. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. Um, yeah, I would say. Um, you're absolutely welcome to stay for the whole meeting, but do not feel at all like you have to. Oh, we on. understand it's a long meeting. Thank you for making time for us. It was great meeting Thank all you. of you, you, or seeing all of you again. Thank you. Okay. I think Steve is up. Up next, yes, we're going to hear from Steve Turks on Stevenson <coughs> Elementary. Physically present. Yes. Yeah. In the front. <laughs> we are honored. Is this a hologram? <laughs> <laughs> you can be wherever you want. It's your meeting right now. <clears throat> Could be. I feel like the audience just walked out. <laughs> That's okay. I think you can make that taller if you want to. Is that what I do? Yeah, Look at you. He's a, he's a designer. <laughs> yeah, he's a designer. He, he, yeah. <laughs> he probably designed that piece of furniture. <laughs> Okay, um, well, th thanks for having us tonight, having me tonight. Uh, we've been hard at work um, on Stevenson Elementary School. As you know, the board approved uh, us to help with a master plan for Stevenson. And so tonight I've been asked to just give the board an update on the process that we've been going through. We just completed our second of two, oh, turn it on, it helps of two, or a second of, of what will be three workshops uh, just this past week. And <clears throat> we've got a third one coming up in August. Uh, so I'm, I'm just not gonna tell you the process here. I'll just describe that as we go through uh, the next slides. And so basically what I've got prepared for you tonight is a recap of the first two workshops. This will be sort of a bit fast paced. I'm just gonna give you sort of an overview, quite a few images here. And then just invite you to ask, you can ask, ask questions absolutely anytime, just stop me, or we can take them all at the end if you've, if you've got any. Uh, one of the things we ask folks to walk in the door with at the very first workshop, bring a aspirational word and an aspirational object that speak to your ideas, your vision, your goals for the redevelopment of Stevenson Elementary School. So you're seeing on the screen, I'm not going to go through any of these, just kind of what people brought in with them. So, uh, and lots of commonality between <clears throat> what folks said here 
and other aspects of the workshop that I'll describe in a moment. Um, and this was, this was just a nice icebreaker to get people sort of thinking about in advance of the workshop, uh, thinking about the day, thinking about their goals, and helping the, you know, them to introduce themselves uh, during the workshop. <clears throat> we did a, uh, a brief presentation that we call Living in Beta, the Landscape of Future Ready Schools, just to get the wheels turning a little bit about what we're seeing in some of our work with other clients around the country. But we always like to start with this slide, which is a reminder that the most important thing we're here to talk about is the learning journey that you want to take your students on. We'll figure out a way to wrap space around that, but what is that, what is that learning, what is that work you want students to be doing every day in school? What is that about? And, and then let's have a conversation about that. That said, there are lots of trends that we're seeing, uh, lots of themes that we see in our work from you know, around sustainability to flexibility, to all sorts of things. And we did a, a little slideshow on each of those. Here's a, a slide about flexibility. Safety and security always comes up. Uh, so just a couple of images from what was probably a 30-minute uh, presentation to get people a little bit acclimated to the conversation. One of the things we love to do is something we call visual listening. Um, if you've participated in any of our workshops, you've done this with us. We plaster the walls with these large poster-sized sheets of paper that are, th that are thematic. You can sort of see what those are from collaborative spaces to tr flexibility and transparency. Ask people to put dots on images that resonate with them, both positively and negatively. And then we do a little, tell us, tell us why you put your dots where you put them. And we, so we collect that information and again, themes start to emerge from these conversations, like lots of dots uh, ended up, for instance, on uh, you know, connections to the outside, outdoor learning. And that might be because Stevenson site is a little tight now and you have to go across the street to get to the playground. But uh, themes emerge there that are <laughs> important. Um, this, this next activity we did was really getting folks to think about, as I just mentioned, that kind of work that should be have, students should be doing in classrooms every day. What are those activities? And we had think, people think about those from you know, core academics to visual arts to performing arts. Um, and this, this, import, this conversation is important, again, to think about not, not so much about space just yet, we got to that conversation, but what are the types of activities that we need to wrap space around? Um, and interestingly enough, if I go back to that slide, if you look over it, we ask the th people to think about how do, what does it look like now and what do you think it should look like in the future? And so um, you know, I put this slide in the deck that I shared with the, with the, with the group uh, last week to say, you know, we're still going to have these things that look like classrooms, right? But, we, but based on that conversation, what we probably might not have is what you see on the right where that sort of factory model where you just have the same thing marching down a corridor. It's kind of the way Stevenson is now. Um, but you know, that's something that, as the group was describing it, much more sort of uh, small group and collaborative work and work around projects, kind of work that they, that they do a lot right now. You see them pushing out into hallways all over the place. It's Stevenson now. Am I right? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we said, okay, th if those are the kind of activities, think about the types of spaces. And so this is looking at core academics. And again, I'm not gonna read these for you tonight. But this, is, this was important for us to professional and community and media spaces, fitness, wellness, visual, and performing arts, uh, that we then took all that information and began to synthesize it into a program document that we'll talk about in just a moment. One of the other things, we left some postcards on the tables. We call this postcard from the future. Um, thinking about 10 years from now, you're visiting the redeveloped uh, Stevenson Elementary School. You're so struck by what you see you pen a postcard to your friend, what do you tell them? And so lots of themes emerged. So we took all those and gathered them and, and grouped them into themes. And so you're seeing those on the screen from ideas about flexibility. And you can see where it says multiple mentions, um, places to, for kids to collaborate, and this you know, connection to the outside, natural light, a bright uh, interior, and so forth. Um, we asked them to think about guiding principles that should really drive the work. And so we had them broken into three tables, and these were their, this is what they wrote, and we took that and synthesized it here in ideas about flexibility, uh, that the, the, the learning environments at Stevenson should be flexible, adaptable, spark curiosity. It should be centered around the kind of work kids do, 
appropriately designed for that for their success. They should be sustainable, welcoming, uh, safe and secure, uh, res fiscally responsible, and community responsive. Or the sort of the themes that came out of those. So really, a pretty good list. If we want to hold as hold those up as we progress into the and now launching into actually doing some planning. And this should be, we should be testing against this set of guiding principles as we go forward. That ended workshop one, workshop two, we brought back those ideas about space in the form of what we call a program tree, which you see here to the left, it's a graphic representation of the program. So all the circles are relative size to everything else. So the biggest green circle you might guess is the gym. Um, you can see classroom, classroom uh, organizations and groupings up at the top. That's all really uh, supported by what's all the spaces are pushed into a spreadsheet, which is, is what you see here. We then um, did a little presentation that we call ideas to buildings. We have lots of ideas embedded in the program. How have other clients sort of then taken those and brought them into uh, realizations about space in a, in a series of, we've always break our programs down into these seven, what we call planning areas just to sort of chunk up the program and make it more digestible uh, in terms of thinking about how, you know, how space gets organized. Uh, a few, you know, so we shared some ideas, uh, just a couple of slides that I'll go through here quickly about how other clients have organized similar spaces and, you know, connections to uh, uh, classrooms, to collaborative uh, spaces outside of classrooms, flexible partitions. This happens to be a school that is up in, over in Upper Arlington that um, the group visited uh, and toured. They went to, did you go to Wycliffe or Windermere? Windermere. They went to Windermere. Um, and, you know, looking at sort of that sort of uh, learning neighborhood and, you know, how that operates uh, and, you know, what those environments uh, look like. And so then they were tasked with taking the program tree and uh, if I go back, I went too quick there. You can see that the sort of the task, you know, are there spaces missing that you talked about that we didn't capture? Are there things there that shouldn't be there? Um, are there two spaces you could combine into one space and thereby making them work harder for you? So something is maybe not sitting idle. And then, you know, taking a look at the program document. So this is just a recording of their work uh, so that as they were doing this and talking about this, we were live editing the, the actual Excel spreadsheet. When we walked in the door uh, last week, we were sitting at, I have to put my glasses on now, sorry. Uh, just shy of 84,000 square feet. Now, what's important to note about that is in comparison to the existing Stevenson Elementary School footprint, which is um, about 45,000 square feet. So it's quite a bit larger. Um, and so, we've, so we had some work to do when we asked them to do that work. When we walked out of here that day, we uh, had, uh, through the efforts of the group, had reduced by about 7,200 square feet. Still, this building is still quite a bit larger than the existing Stevenson. And I think there's probably a little bit more work that we're gonna to need to do around that, but we will be test fitting now this program on that site. Um, we asked them to do that, to help us do that though. We uh, had them begin to think about relationships between spaces that are in the program. How should they set relative to each other? What are those important relationships? And this is the results of that work. People thinking about their learning neighborhoods, about uh, administrative type spaces, about you know, how gyms want to relate to cafeterias and that type of thing. We also shared with the group uh, a quick uh, analysis of the site, the existing site, and looking at what, what, you know, what the current zoning of the site is. It's, a, it's an R2S. <coughs> Uh, and it's zoning, it's got height limitations, it's got some setbacks and so forth that we sort of graphically depicted uh, on, this, on this site plan. Uh, but one of the things we also did share with them, is, so that's the existing footprint that you're seeing of Stevenson there. And the, so the red, the red line is the building, is, is the uh, site property line. The black dotted line that sits just in board of that is what zoning says about what the building setback should be from your property line. It's, a, it's about, uh, the site is a roughly, it's just shy of 100,000 square feet, which puts it about 2.2 and some change acres. Uh, so it's a tight site mm -hmm. for a school of this size. And I'm not telling you anything you don't know. It's got, it's challenged a little bit further because of the topography. Uh, you know, as you move to the west, you're really up, up a pretty steep incline and 
the parking lot that's that's uh, no, on the north end of it is up six or seven feet above sort of the elevation of, of where the school is. Um, obviously across the street uh, from the city park. Um, what's on the screen now is <coughs> taking the program that we walked in the door with, which is about 84,000 square feet, and saying, if you take the gym component of it, which, and the support spaces of that, and you gross it up a little bit to get sort of a, 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 a building chunk, it's about 10,000 square feet. Um, that's the top cube. Those gyms typically in schools and suburban communities sit on at, at ground level. That makes access to them easy and so forth. The rest of it then, that 74,000 square feet was either two stories or three stories. That's what those shapes are that are up on the screen there. Just to give them some building blocks to begin to play with and think about how might those fit on the site if there was an option to replace the building. Um, and we let them think about, like, what options do you think should go forward from a planning standpoint? Uh, and so you can see from the scale of those, they're, they're, they're a little bit tight on the site. Um, and that's true in their schemes that, so these are their sketches and, and their kind of wonderings and ponderings about what might want to happen there. But these are, um, on the right, are describing some themes that came out of that. Definitely a preference for a two-story building, but understanding that given the site size and what the, where the program sits right now, may need to go to three stories uh, just to conserve open space on the site. Might, be, might, might, might want to be a consideration. Uh, none of the groups suggested that uh, a renovation of the existing building, interestingly enough. So that was one of the first questions, or one of my first observations as they all got done presenting, I said, There's, there is an option here that none of you presented what is it? And I forget who it was. Maybe, I don't know if it was you, Andy, that said nobody presented a renovation scheme. I feel like we've got an obligation for you to show you a renovation scheme of, it might be renovation addition. There's not enough, if that program holds, there's not enough square footage there to be able to do it. So that's something that we'll definitely be looking at. Uh, multiple groups suggested the building. What if it happens if it was built someplace else? Um, so there's an interesting wondering. Like the question, big question is, okay, where? Uh, desire, certainly a desire given the current constraints on that site to have a playground <coughs> on that site and to have some way to drop students off like on your property uh, it, you know it puts a little bit more pressure on the site to be able to do that but um, and then one polled um, I was I was asking because of the reno the idea about renovation is there a piece of this building a part of this building that is the piece that should really stay and it was the original, uh, you know, old building that faces Oxley is the one that, if we're going to keep, a, if one piece of this is going to go away, it should be, actually be the more recently added piece and keep the original. So that is kind of where we are, where we're heading is uh, on, on August 10th, we've got our third workshop. What we will be hard at work doing is taking the program that we, where we end, where, we're, where it landed at the end of workshop two. I think there's probably more conversations we'll have with district administration about the program, but beginning to test fit ideas on the site, planning ideas on the site, uh, based on the work that the, the, the team did here uh, a week ago, but coming back in the third workshop now with a series of options that, you know, that we'll dig into and give the, give the, uh, the workshop committee a chance to comment on, we'll break them back into small groups, okay, what do you like about this? Should you put this piece with this option and with that piece from that option and create yet a, you know, a third or a fourth option, whatever that, whatever that might be. But that's the work that's ahead of us. Uh, we will, at the right time, be putting dollars to these options uh, for, the, for the board's consideration as well. And with that. If I may, just say a couple things. One, <clears throat> uh, Steve and Amy have done an excellent job of facilitating a process where all voices have been heard and opinions. Uh, additionally, in advance of our August 10th meeting, which is our third and likely final uh, master planning meeting for Stevenson, uh, we will be meeting with city, Grandview Heights city officials just to discuss where we currently are, giving them an update. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say whether it's a reno or new on this footprint, it's going to require our going to planning commission for a variance, whether that means we're going to be encroaching on the setbacks setback or it's going to be a three-story building we also because it has been brought up by our committee members 
uh, we'll be discussing just potential considerations for alternate locations. I, I'm not overly optimistic about that, but we will be having that. And um, Steve and Amy and uh, likely one or two board members will participate in that. We tentatively have a date set. I want to say it's July 18th. 18th. Yeah. Um, so that will be in advance of our August 10th final Stevenson Elementary uh, meeting. Um, also, uh, while we don't have the official date set, but after that August 10th meeting, I speculate it will be in October, but I guess it, it could be November, it could be September. I say October only because after this next meeting, there is going to have to be some pencil to a paper and some significant analysis in terms of cost, cost estimations. Yeah. And um, I, my speculation is that's going to require a little more time. And I want for the next update to the board to have all of that complete. I think the, the, the other thing that is really important to mention <clears throat> and be honest about is that building this building whether it's a reno or a new is going to take in or around 15 months 12 to 15 months i speculate yeah, it depends on how it might be phased well and which is my lead into the phasing for doing a reno or a new build on this site is going to cause is going to require students going to an alternate setting for school which is going to be a, a challenge. And so I do think as part of this master plan, we want to think that through and have a framework or frameworks of consideration because that is going to be equally important and rightfully so for our students, community, and parents of students that will attend that school. Yeah. I want to say too, I was there for part of the workshop. I wasn't there the whole time um, workshop too, but I was there for the piece where we had the shapes and we were trying to fit them on and it was noted that no one brought up a renovation plan. And I would say for me personally, it, it wasn't that I was like, no renovation. It was like it didn't cross my mind. We had shapes and we were supposed to put them together. So it wasn't, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't like a Might thought through we, process. We set of it like, up, yeah. You know what I mean? And so I just want to say in that, and I probably wasn't alone in that. So I don't think we should take away from it that all the people there are thinking absolutely no to renovation, but more so that, you know, there was one task and like mind was on like that puzzle. That task, yeah. Anyway. Fair enough. Good point. I have a question about um, after the design is made, will the process be the same as last time where you have like a couple of options of design um, that then will have different costs con collected and then you'll have a committee that'll decide which one they think a levy, like how much the community could afford? Yeah, so the the um, the scope okay. of this project, and I will make sure I articulate this right and don't misspeak, and so help okay. me here, anyone, <laughs> is that there will be a renovation slash new build option with costs, uh, square footage, programming associated with the space for our needs, um, and that will be a plan. And then additionally, there will be a new build and costs associated with that and square footage and, you know, um, uh, programming and spaces associated with that. And then parallel to that, there will be phasing for where kids will be during the reno new build for, for that as well. Analogous to the K-12 athletic master plan. I think there were three yeah. options, if yeah. my mind serves me correct, or there's really two options, but like one of them had like a minor difference. Yeah. yeah. A couple of questions. Yeah. Um, one is, I, from the group assembled there, did was there any input or any, I don't know if you talked about it directly or maybe it just came up, but reactions to these buildings that people either saying, do this again, or we want it to be a little different? Not that I recall. So my, my response to that would be that I think <clears throat> the familiarity with these spaces certainly drove um, when they're thinking about space and using words like flexibility, collaboration space, 
um, grade level family zones. And by that I mean, you know, when, they're, when each group, independent of each other, were thinking about space, it was, you know, four or five classrooms with a common collaboration space that was somewhat independent, first grade from second. Mm -hmm. Analogous to mm -hmm. this building. Yeah. 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 With, uh, you know, a media center in the middle. Um, so I, I, I don't know that they overtly said, well, we want it like this, but the designing of the program was almost identical to, in particular, the 4-8 building. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of related, but more for you as an architect mm -hmm. instead of uh, input. I think it'd be really helpful to me as we think about the square footages and, you know, there was this much and yeah. then you get down, that for better or for worse, we've created a standard with this building, Yeah. which I think feels good to a lot of us. Yeah. And I know that, you know, elementary school is not the same as middle school, you know, and not the same as high school and there's different kind of, but I think there's some fairly established ratios, you know, that sure. you would think. So kind of maybe if you take this as a little homework, think about like if you were to say the standard that we have as a specifically around square footage for the middle school, how, what would be the analogous thing for uh, an elementary school, assuming you know the number of kids that we think we're going to have at that school? Yeah, I mean, we've already sort of begun that work, okay. um, Eric, uh, and not just thinking about it in context of this project, but other elementary schools. Like, for instance, we've just done the elementary schools up in UA, mm -hmm. and so thinking about there's like certain ratios that I'm sure you're familiar, like square feet per student. You know, for for as a for instance, um, the which in the case of Stevenson actually, you 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 might expect or you actually should expect the square feet per student to be a bit higher because, as compared to a Upper Arlington Elementary School that had you know it's got a cafeteria about the same size, it's got a gym about the same size, it's got you know they've got more students, right? Yeah, so yeah, we're adding years. incremental classrooms and we're keeping all that other stuff the same. So they're amortizing, if, if I can use that word right, a bigger, you know, you're getting, you know, their, their square feet per student is lower as, mm -hmm. as a result. They're sure. amortizing their kids over, over the same space as core spaces that you'll have here. So um, we've already started dialing back some things, uh, which is, you know, partly resulting in the number that you saw up on the screen. Uh, the one thing I would remind the board is, I'm sure you've all been in Stevenson and sort of experienced that. Go there when it's full of kids. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a pretty amazing place, really. But, uh, but sort of across the board, when you look at their average size, uh, their classrooms is about 650. The gym is really, really small by today's standards. Maybe it was exactly what, you know, it's per that time period, right, when it was built. Um, cafeteria, like it's almost across the board, everything needs to, that. so it's not, you know, I don't think there's any real, real extravagances in the program right now, but we still have work to do, you know, to try to think about how do we, because square footage is, you know, at the end of the day equals dollars. Uh, and so, you know, everybody, everybody is cognizant of that and it's something that we're gonna have some focus on. If we were to get the variances, maybe mm -hmm. some flexibility, <coughs> setbacks, things like that, and let's go with, because like right now I'm thinking of Stevenson, I'm like, there's the parking lot that's yeah. up the hill, and there's this or that. Hypothetical, is it possible to do a complete new build while keeping the school intact? Yeah, it's on a that tough one, site? right? It's, it, a, it's a tough site for that. Okay. So it's something though that I think we will be looking at. Right. If if and this is a big if right now, yeah, yeah. we looked at keeping that original building, the place to start building something new is probably where the addition is. All right. So what can you build there that's meaningful enough that you can then push some kids into it and then, you know, sort of take on the renovate. If it's if we kept there, you take on the renovation of that existing building. I would, you know, I would speculate right now with right here today without having drawn anything yet mm -hmm. that you won't fit all the kids into that whatever that thing is that gets built behind the building right mm -hmm. so t 
to, to Andy's point earlier, um, you know, to, to try to get this done as fast as possible, if there's a, if there's a way to have students offsite mm -hmm. while this is happening, that gets you, that gets the project done faster without a doubt. If that's not feasible, then we, we've certainly dealt with these kind of, it's gonna be a leapfrogging type of thing where you do something, move some kids in, attack another part of the building or a, a piece of new construction. Don't have good visibility on that right now because we really, you know, haven't put pen to paper on, you know, on the planning ideas yet. Because we had like with this project, it was we shifted yeah, kids and it completely. worked out amazingly. And what I'm hearing you say, and I understand there's no pen to paper here, it is not likely that we will not disrupt the learning somehow, have them off site, have them whatever, that in some way, shape, or form, some of the kids will be shuffled from their original learning environment is what I'm kind of following you to say. And, and some, we'll try to keep it yeah. normal, clearly. We, do, I, I, we try our hardest to, I understanding that, that yeah. learning is the top priority mm -hmm. to, to be as least disruptive as possible. But what I'm also hearing you say is that there is some possibility, like it's not, we're not gonna have a whole entire school offline. Is that, is that also a correct uh, assumption? I don't know. Okay, I don't fair know. enough. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that you would know, but I yeah. figured I'd ask. Yeah, I, I think once we start looking at the planning options, mm -hmm. it'll start uh, surfacing like, okay, if that <laughs> wants to be the end state, how do you get to that end state? What are the logical steps to right. get you there? If that's a desire, if that's a compelling end state, um, you know, what does it mean to actually do that? It's playing Tetris and it's hard, but it's yeah. kind of the, yeah. I didn't know if it was possible if it wasn't, and the answer is, yeah, I, we don't you know. know. The, That's fair. You know, if you had, you know, at, you know UA was, a, their, their sites aren't huge, but they were, you know, at Windermere it was big enough we could build a new building next to the existing one, right? Mm -hmm. that, that does not exist on your site. That, we, I think all of us understand when you look at the site map, like I think Kevin had a very audible reaction that was going on in my head at the same time where it's like, ugh. Like it's a it's a unique and tight it is. And oddly yeah. shaped spot. Yeah. Trapezoid maybe? Yeah. Following up on Molly's point, and this is just correct me if I'm wrong, but you mentioned a timeline of potentially like a twelve to a fifteen month building process. Yeah, that was Andy's that timeline. Was, that was Andy's. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe this yeah. is maybe this is a question for Andy then. Um, <laughs> well, and, and, and kind of, kind of with, with your expertise as well, of course. Yeah. Like, if you took it down and built it up, yeah. you, you I, might be able to do that over two summers in a school year. Yeah. However, if you do the addition and renovation, trying to keep a portion of the building, and it's then going to be longer. It's going to be longer. It's going to be way longer. Yeah, without so a doubt. now you're talking about multiple years Correct. of disruption. Correct, without a doubt. Than, Which, without a doubt. Yeah. 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 I can tell you, I mean, that where we expensive. ended up on the program is that, a, and more expensive yeah. from a square footage standpoint Likely. is about the size of those two elementary schools in UA and that's exactly what they did Kevin it was they started right at the end of the school year so they took the two summers and the academic year mm -hmm. and got it done yeah so I think it's a uh, building this size that's doable uh -huh. is it a push it's a little bit of a push but it's doable okay thanks but that's not not a 12 month process that that will be 15 month process. 15, it, so, yeah, it, it is doable if the students aren't, aren't on there, the not site there. at right. all. That's, that's it, and, and what he's getting at, which is right minded way to think about it, if you phased it differently, where you're doing a portion of the building and then another portion, it could be three years. Right. Okay. Cause or that's, four. I, I don't that's know. That's what I was at. But, I was, but the quickest, got... cheapest, best, well, I don't know if it's best, is to, is is to have the students not on site mm -hmm. to get it done quickest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that that's very disruptive for a year. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But or 15 months. It'd be an academic. It'd be for the kids' point of view. It'd be an academic year. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> but this is part of what the master plan will yield. This type of analysis and specificity ultimately. Mm -hmm. In your experience, has it worked well to, or maybe do you have a preference? New build, renovate, renovate, does it just, like how, 
I'm trying to think of how I want to word this one because we did a renovation in the new build, so it was like we had the. You did both. Yeah, we had, we did both. So this is, is it easier to do a renovation or I'm like. I I would say generally. <clears throat> and I mean I know to pull kids off. <laughs> yeah, looking back here, at Mr. Tadina, who's up next, I yeah. think. Um, <laughs> I would say generally from you know if you just want to talk about ease, uh -huh. building a new building is probably easier than going in and kind of ripping the guts out of an existing right. building, which is probably what we would need to do at Stevenson. Because mm -hmm. it's, I mean, you think about all the classrooms there are too small, so how do you, if we keep academic okay. classrooms in the original Stevenson building, how do you incrementally make them larger to get them a little bit more on par with, you know, where you would want them to be? Mm -hmm. You're really tearing a lot of stuff apart in there. You know, you probably want to look at new mechanical, new plumbing. Like, you don't want to end up with a complete project and, right and say, yeah, okay, 15 or 20 years from now, we're gonna have to fix all this stuff, right? right? right. So the way you answered that was leading me to my next one, because I'm like, to do what probably is gonna be wanted to be done, Stevenson probably would have to, my words, go to the studs, like, yeah, I, not, have to be like I think you could be, have to be, like if you think about, yeah. you know, if you walk through this during mm -hmm. its construction, mm -hmm. it was pretty ripped apart. Yeah, right. when we did, yeah. all we of did. us went through. It was so. fun. Yeah. 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 But that's where, so like what I'm, it's hard because there's not a, to me, I'm, what I want to ask you is I'm like, can you tell me what it's going to look like? Like, I want to <laughs> see it, yeah. but you're not there yet. And rightfully so, you should not be there. Um, but it's kind of like, it's hard to look at everything that you guys are coming up and being like, how are we going to do this? Yeah. And that's, so like the questions I'm asking, I'm like, first of all, it's like, how do we not disrupt our kids? But we don't know that because we don't know what we don't know We don't know, know what the solution is yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's where, so these things that I'm like, I want to ask you, yeah. but I can't. And you're here in real life, so I want to ask all my questions. <laughs> but no, it's the information that you have answered with that question. It's, it's helpful to Good. we're at where we're at. Yeah, we are. And, and like I heard you say, like, and, and I get where you're coming. You're not mm -hmm. actually saying this, but like, how are you going to do this? But like, because uh -huh. there's no route forward that isn't challenging. Correct. Right. But with that said, it's also how are we not going to do this? Because mm -hmm. if you look at Stevenson and what they're doing with that space right now, it's like, oh, this isn't this isn't something that we should we should keep up for another mm -hmm. ten years. Like right. that is not that's not a good way for the kids to be learning and the staff to be treated. Like so regardless of the challenges, we're going to forge ahead and find mm -hmm. a way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's I mean you hit it where I'm like, it's it's not a question to not do yeah, it. Yeah, right, and I knew that's not what you're saying. Yeah, yeah this no, is, I, <laughs> I love doing these workshops. I mean, I just, like this upfront process, I really, truly love it. This is where it gets really fun and really interesting now is when it's like, okay, now we gotta figure it out, right? So this is, this is where it really starts getting fun. I like your use of the word fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. to me, I'm like, oh, I wanna see it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I had a project in, uh, we did, we're working on a school in China. It was our very first trip over there, very first meeting with the client. And literally, the first words out of his mouth were, do you have a rendering? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, haven't even, we haven't even talked about the program. Me, me, I'm like, what'd you get? Give me options. So no, we don't have that yet. <laughs> we'll get there in all due time. No, in the way that you're handling, and I do want to say thank you to your team that has done it, um, Andy and Beth, who have led this, because the way you're doing it is, 100% how it should be done. I know that I like things done yesterday and yeah. I like pictures, but that's, your method is gonna yield, I mean, we're sitting here. Right. And it's something that's amazing yeah. that came about by doing it the right way instead of like the renderings and all that stuff, even though those, that's kind of the exciting part. Yeah. But this is also exciting to see, like as I was looking at it, I was like, ooh, the people that were there had definite opinions that I don't know I would have thought about. Right. And that's so yeah. the way that this is handled. It's I want to say thank you to all because oh, it's sure. not easy work, but it's it's going to yield. We a love great doing product. it. Though. Yeah. Thank you. It's very enjoyable for us, and we love doing it with <laughs> Grandview. We're good people. Absolutely. <laughs> Other questions? Any more questions? No. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for being I'll here. I'll up with you tomorrow. I've got something to talk to you. About. Excellent. Okay. All right. Mr. Culp, presenting on strategic planning.
Sorry. There we go. So first off, um, I am here tonight to present on our strategic planning process. And I wanna lead with, this is the most important thing about this strategic plan that is the culmination of all of this work is process, process, process. And I wanna begin by saying that <clears throat> this process included students of Grandview Heights, past students or graduates of Grandview Heights, teachers of Grandview Heights, community leaders, administrators, and board members. And so it was a wide net that we cast. And it culminated in what I am about to share with you. But before I get to the outcomes, I think it's important just to take a little journey and remember where we began. So in 2015 and 2016, Grandview Heights embarked on their first strategic plan. And that strategic plan, similar to this, included focus groups of graduates, of current students, of parents, of administration, and of teachers. And that was also a year-long process. And at the conclusion of that process, we landed on three core goals, goals being enduring, objectives being time-bound or annual. The first goal was to evolve curriculum and teaching methods to ensure college and career preparedness, empowering our students to lead and achieve in, in an increasingly competitive world. The second goal was about what the learning would look like in the classroom. How would we personalize the learning experience for our students? And then the third goal was design and implement innovative learning spaces in our facilities and with our technologies to ensure a solid infrastructure, investment, and strategic plan for our future. I wanted to share these three goals with you because I think it important to reflect on from 2015, 2016, and then where we are today. And some of the examples of those outcomes realized from that first strategic plan that we did many years ago was <clears throat> transformationally increased access to AP courses. So way, way more students taking AP courses, more AP offerings as well. So before, I mean, I could pull up the statistics, but to give you a quick, quick example, you know, we maybe had 20% of our kids taking an NA, AP class then, where now um, you know, I, I would say that it would be unlikely that any student not take at least one AP class uh, before they graduate, which was not at all the case. So that's just an example of a change that occurred from then to now. Majorly transformed the math trajectory in terms of students' access to advanced math sooner. Added physical science in eighth grade. We passed a, some of you may remember, a bond levy in November of 2018 that culminated in this very room that we're sitting as well as a totally transformed, renovated Grandview Heights High School, also safety and security and ADA access at Stevenson. We focused on how we teach and with a focus on project-based learning and design challenges, so application of learning. Created an explore class and provided, you know, it, it may seem like a foreign concept and hard to believe, but one of the other uh, outcomes of our strategic planning was moving to one-to-one. -to -one. So in, in 2015, we had Chromebooks, I think, for all juniors and seniors. That was it. So, you know, to, to think about, like we take it for granted today, where every single kid has a device or access to a device. Um, so those were some of the tangible outcomes that culminated and were actualized as a result of our strategic planning process in 2015 and 2016. <clears throat> we also created a tagline, a small place to dream big. The academic logo, the interlock GH that you see everywhere now was also an outcome of that process. The Bobcat athletic logo that you see all over the place was another outcome of that. The hashtag GHS dream big was another outcome. Explore passions, develop purpose, unlock potential. 
So as I kind of said now, I'm going to turn the page to this process. Again, it was a 12-month process, and I think perhaps the most important thing equal to the outcomes is the engagement of a myriad of uh, users and groups. So process, process, process. We began this journey in July 2022, so almost a year ago, just a little less. Um, we revisited our mission, our goals, our priorities. We included, again, teachers, staff, parents, community leaders, students, administration, and Board of Education. We did surveys, we researched, we benchmarked, we visited other schools. Um, we wrote briefing reports. And all of you in front of you do have a binder or packet or a booklet, maybe is the best word for it. And it has copies of all of those brief briefing reports along with the, the outcomes, and that's for you to take home. So some of the outcomes of this process is that we all were uh, in agreement that Grandview Heights Schools is a small place to dream big, and we're going to keep that tagline. We're going to keep our mission, which is to maximize and personalize every student's learning. We did create a new vision statement. And while this may seem simple and when you read it, you're like, oh, geez, that, that seems intuitive or hopefully you like it. This took a lot of energy, work, and effort and a lot of time. Um, and, and our vision statement is, students will dare to explore and pursue boundless possibilities. Could you say how Denise used to always say how you take the mission and the vision and like link them? Yeah, our mission is to maximize and personalize every student's learning so that students will dare to explore and pursue boundless possibilities. She always uses that as a way to link the two to show you how they're two distinct, the mission and vision. And I, I feel like that's an important to like hear the whole thing sometimes. Agree. We authored commitments. Um, so our first commitment was placing students first, and then we had four bullets under that. Our next was creating personal relationships, and we had three bullets under that. Our next was providing personalized learning experiences, <clears throat> and we have three bullets under that. And then our final commitment was embracing community, and we have four bullets under We created attributes for success, integrity, resilient, curious innovator, intentional communicator, and then our priorities. So the first strategic priority is around personalized learning, and it reads as follows. Provide all students with intentionally designed authentic and relevant learning experience across all curricular areas. And then there are five action steps or statements under that. The next one deals with well-being. Create opportunities to ensure all students and staff have a strong sense of belonging and empowering students with strategies for a well-balanced life. And then there are five strategies and the, the next strategic pr uh, priority is safety and resourcing. Provide a safe and secure learning environment and responsibly manage financial resources, human resources, and facilities to meet the, the needs of today's learners. And there are four strategies under that. I think um, one of the things that I want, and, and under each of those three, the briefing reports included in your binder has research and a much deeper dive uh, around all of the intense work that went into uh, authoring these. I think you know what, one of one of the takeaways, um, having been a part of the initial process for strategic planning from today, and this is just more anecdotal or qualitative in nature from your superintendent's perspective. And that is that in 2015 and in 2016, when we did our process, whether we were talking to students, staff, administration, and certainly board members and parents, 
there was a strong desire to increase academic rigor. Increase academic rigor. If I heard that once through our initial strategic planning process, I heard it a hundred times, that we are this tremendous uh, community and this amazing school district, but that we are only barely touching the surface of preparing kids for college or career readiness and that we need to do more as a district. We owe it to our students to increase academic rigor. That would be, if I had, and, and the second thing would be certainly facilities. What I would say today is while there is a desire to maintain and sharpen the saw relative to academic rigor, what we heard in a myriad of circles, so parents, administration, staff, students, was this idea of uh, well-being and belonging and mental health and a balance of academic rigor with um, love of learning, mm -hmm. of a sense of belonging, of belonging or participating in an extracurricular where I or every student that walks through the, the doors of this school feel valued and supported and a part of something bigger than themselves. Um, so if I had to say just through a qualitative analysis of being a part of both processes, um, that would be how I would describe the difference between 2015, 2016, and today. That's not a lot of time for that shift, in my opinion. You know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of a, a 180. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it wasn't that I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to send the wrong message. I mean, clearly, I think that parents still want academic rigor and for their kids to be prepared for career or college. Um, I didn't hear you need to stop. But what I did hear is that we need to make sure that we're doing both and that there isn't this, this, this idea of academic rigor, while important, we don't want to create this environment or culture climate where there's a race to nowhere. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't think you're overstating it. I said I sat on one of the committees, and you're you're spot on. But there's also too like think of the. It sounds wild to say. Think of the world nine years ago. You but would totally. never have heard at nauseum mental health. Yes. You could say SEL, and I would be like, Are they going to be part of the SEC? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, it's one of those like, and I was in part of them too, like they're spot on and it's a good observation of where it feels like there's a big shift and there is, but there isn't, if that's. I do think like the, you know, the pandemic mm -hmm. shifted oh, yeah. a lot of priorities. I mean, that's obvious, but um, I'm ha I mean, I think I'm, it's great direction in my opinion. I think it's right on target with what our community is looking for. I agree, which speaks to the importance not to be redundant. My saying process, process and casting the net wide isn't a tagline. But when you do that with integrity and you have a, a thorough process, it ought to be reflective of the community's values, hopes and dreams, as well as the students and staff. Yeah, but there is too. I want to follow up like this is going to sound a little bit maybe different. Coming up with the plan, in my opinion, is not the hard work. Mm -hmm. The hard work just came right to your door because it's not just we need to make sure that these students are ready academically to conquer the world. They also have to be ready emotionally, physically, spirit, like the whole nine yards. Like as much I'm like, this is a good plan, but I'm like, oh, this is some work. Mm -hmm. Like to achieve this, this is not. This is a lofty task. We're up to it. We are absolutely up to it. And then a year later, you're going to be like, Molly, thank you for telling me I was up to this task. Because you are. But this is, it's, there's so many things. And it's like, as I read, because I had to close it. Because I'm like, now I'm, I'm reading this and not paying attention. There's a lot here. And it's, our community, our schools are up to, for the task. But I'm like, this is some goals. And my hat is off for you. Because you're like, we're going to do it. We are. But I think it's great. I love goals. Um, so that's a great transition to my ne my question, which is, so this is fantastic. What will it look like to roll this out to the school community? And then how um, can 
we as the board continue to watch you kind of hit the mark? Excellent you question. Great question. So we have already begun as a leadership team to formulate our continuous improvement plan, which is what uh, drives our focus. And what we do is we went on a leadership retreat today and we began with the end in mind and we disaggregate it such that we start with the question of, okay, what is it that we want to accomplish by July uh, 2024? And then we work backwards based on this document and we set, those are goals, but we, what we do is we set annual objectives. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> uh, we want for those objectives to be focused and time bound for that year. And we work backwards because we want to be able to determine what it is that we can realistically accomplish in a given year. Mm -hmm. uh, so we begin to set benchmarks of what it is we, can, we think we can accomplish in a given year. And then we write an annual objective for that and then action steps and who's responsible for each of those action steps such that by July 2024 we'll be able to furnish tangible evidence of accomplishment. Um, and then we assign those objectives to say for example, um, you know, Beth has certain financial objectives. Um, you know, I have certain academic and uh, facility uh, operations objectives. Um, you know, Chris has some technology objectives. Jim Buffer has some, with principles, safety and security uh, objectives. What I think is most important, that aside, is this idea of a narrowly identified set of agreed upon annual objectives where there's unity of purpose and focus, such that my objectives are Beth's objectives, Chris' objectives, Rob's objectives, Angie Olam's objectives, and then they're the principal's objectives with some ownership based on the building and cognitive age group that they're working with. But when there's that unity of purpose and focus, that's when we are able to realize the changes, for example, that we realized from the last strategic planning. When we're all over but nowhere, and you know, I have eight objectives, and Rob has 10 objectives, five of which aren't even related to what my objectives are, then you're all over and nowhere and you don't accomplish anything. Only when there's unity of purpose and focus are we able to actually accomplish things together. You know, one of the things I say is time is one of our most important commodities. And sometimes in order to get things done, you have to say no to really good ideas. And you have to say no to really good ideas, not that we can't do that, we just can't do it now because we're focused on this. And I do think part of good leadership is saying no and getting all of us on board and rowing the same way and focused on these agreed upon objectives because this is what we prioritize and this is what we, we believe from the board to the superintendent all the way down to the second grade teacher, the seventh grade math teacher, the 12th grade AP bio teacher that we can do in a given year. And when we're able to do that, that's when we're able to accomplish things like, um, like, like this building, for example, or um, you know, changing the culture and climate around AP, or um, you know, focusing on mental health, where every single student has a trusted relationship and is part of a group where they see, where they're part of something bigger than themselves and feel valued. You know, only when you do that, and that is, I do think, part of a superintendent's job or a principal's job or a leadership job, is to identify what those priorities are and, and, and guard our collective efforts and time so that we're focused on this. And only when we do that can we accomplish things together. Um, and I do think that one of the, one of the things I, I, and I'm guilty of it, I'm not perfect, don't get me wrong, but one of the things I do think where superintendents and boards and principals fail is they say yes to it all and they get nothing done. And so I do think, to Molly's point, around this is a really great plan, now the work starts. Part of the work is our ability collectively to identify what our priorities are gonna be and what we're gonna focus on, which means we're going to say no to other really good ideas, at least for now. So, that was really good. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I got a little fired up. 
And it's uh, entirely consistent with you know what you've been saying over the years and the action steps, the year by year. And I like how you have you know the bigger plan and then the, the yearly steps. What I'm thinking about here is um, that one advantage of sort of the academic rigor and the building aspects that we, you know, you said were the big aspects from nine years ago is that um, we could really measure those. We could see the progress. And you could take different steps and different strategies year by year, but you could still see, okay, after nine years, we have two buildings built. And after nine years, you know, the test scores. And after nine years, you know, number of kids taking AP courses. And, you Excellent. know, there's a whole bunch of things that we can really look to and say, with some set sense of objectivity, it's not just that, like, oh, we had changed inputs because we hired this teacher or we did this, but, you know, we really had some of these outputs that we've been tracking, we have as a goal, we know what those are that give us a feedback loop to say we are making progress or we didn't make progress this year and, you know, how is it? So you know where I'm going with this question. You know, we're getting into what seems like a mushier territory. Great question. Not yeah. to say it's less valuable, but Great question. well-being. How do we know yeah. that our kids have better well-being nine years from now yeah. than we, they are now? How do we know that they're lifelong learners? Um, uh, how do we know that we're really succeeding at personalized learning? Um, how do we get that feedback loop going mm. with, and, and I'm sure there are tools out there. Yeah. I mean, educators have thought of this. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's a great question. Um, I'm gonna answer it in a couple different ways. Um, and, and some of what you're asking is what we, some of, some of what we as a leadership team have begun to discuss and have ideas that I think are um, very tangible and very doable to measure more quantitatively outcomes over time and annually around, for example, a sense of belonging. And it's survey on a Likert scale kinds of stuff, Eric, okay? I mean, it's not, you know, earth-shattering, insightful, but that, that's what it manifests to be, right? You do one at the start of the year, at the end of the year, and you, you use Likert scale, and you measure it, and you quantify it, and compare it, and you can do that over time. So there's an example very spe specifically about, say, a sense of belonging, or do you have a trusted adult by trusted, you know, this is what trusted means in, in um, the high school at Stevenson, at Larson, and then use a Likert scale and you compare that over time. So there, there's some quick down and dirty examples of how you can quantify an objective around belonging or um, a trusted adult. <clears throat> Related to this question though, <clears throat> to do that well and to be focused, one of the things that I would be very interested in garnering feedback on and um, not just from the board, and I mean this sincerely, just to be completely vulnerable, and I mean it of the leadership team, although I think there's only two here now. One of the things that I, I'll be, and I've shared this with Angie, I've shared it with Chris, um, but I haven't shared it more widely, but I will um, in the coming weeks. You have a draft, or I've handed it out to you, our first draft of the CIP, which is our first take at, okay, we've created this, strategic plan that's really awesome and it's ambitious. Now, we've, we've taken that and we've, in essence, written uh, in or around six objectives. So, I'll just be brutally honest. I think that might be too many. And so, I don't know that I'm right. I don't know that I'm wrong. I think I'm right to ask the question. Um, you know, I do think and I think I'm not being naive, we have one of the, we have a really strong leadership team who are really uh, intelligent, really ambitious, who really work hard. Um, my sense is it is their belief that we can have six objectives and that we can quantify them in measurable ways and that collectively we have the no enough time, energy, and capacity to do it. I think we need to have another meeting and we need to vet that out a little more. So 
I would be interested, and I'm serious, fully serious, in hearing your feedback, not now, but you're welcome to, on that. But, uh, you know, I handed out a draft. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm concerned about is um, not that we'll get to where we need to get. We aren't going to by the end of next year. We aren't going to have this strategic plan done. If that's what anyone's thinking, I'm telling you, that isn't going to happen. You know, five, six years from now, I feel very confident in our collective efficacy and ability to accomplish and show tangible data qualitatively and quantitatively around our accomplishing what is authored in that plan. What concerns me is time and capacity um, in a given year is our most precious commodity and is six objectives the right number and what we've outlined our wanting to accomplish by july 2024 around those six objective is it realistic because if it's not then we need to we need to sharpen the saw and be reflective on what is and so that's kind of just full disclosure and transparency <laughs> as honest as i can be where I am right now, where we are right now. So I'm answering your question with some examples. We have more work to do on that, Eric. Um, but, you know, I also, and I mean this sincerely, yes, that is my job, and I, we have more work to do on that. But I also know each of you are, uh, you know, really successful in your respective roles and you all do these kinds of things also. I would be interested in your feedback. I mean, many of you, if not all, spend a good deal of time sitting in committees on and talking about with me and us about the stated goals. And so as you think about what we can accomplish realistically by July 2024, you know, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I would very much value that also, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, following up on what Eric mentioned, I I do think there are opportunities to show that we are, especially with our vision, daring to explore and pursuing boundless possibilities. A lot of that is increased programming. That doesn't necessarily go along with AP courses, but goes along with like an explore program or, or a military option vocational or, or vocational education. Um, so, so I think there are ways that we can show that we're achieving these. I agree. It just might not necessarily look like our traditional bar graphs yeah. and spreadsheets that we like. And, and by the way, I agree with you, Eric. I, I do think it's, it is a little bit of a softer target. It, I you, agree. But I think there are ways oh, I agree. that yeah. we can show. And I guess partly the reason I bring it up is I think, um, you know, I, I, you are absolutely right on in saying, you know, it, things, you know, there's, there's only so much time and focus and energy and, and but, if, if we're going to say this is what we value and this is what we want to get better at, I think it is also worth figuring out what we are measuring, what we are tracking. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about what we spend collectively on academic success and, you know, the entire regimes that have gone into, you know, building tests, committing student time, committing, you know, time to analyze the results there, you know, comparing to other, I mean, there's a lot that mm -hmm. goes into that. As you, you know, a hundred times more than I know. So I, I don't want to just say, oh, well, we don't have that and the state hasn't developed it. So, you know, I guess it's just really hard to do. Like if there's, I know one that we've talked about is outcomes, you know, post-graduation. Um, Cause I think some of this gets to that, mm -hmm. you know, hundred percent. Yeah. A student who is a well-rounded individual that isn't just taking a test well, but is centered and is has growth and has good mental health and is um, daring <laughs> and all that, you know, uh, four years after graduation, is, hopefully is gonna be doing well. Yes. And so, again, I, I guess I just bring it out to say, um, from a board perspective, I would be willing to invest in that, mm -hmm. whether that means, you know, buying a new set of tests or mm -hmm. investing in an individual who's responsible for that or you know whatever it takes I, I don't want i don't want it to be like well you know that fuzzy stuff is harder to quantify and so we just we're not we're not going to track it yeah 
I completely agree with Eric. Um, this is a lot of nebulous pieces, and you ask great questions about measuring those, um, I think the word was mushy, um, <laughs> components. I I use My word. question goes to, I have no question about the leadership team, um, but like a business, you know, you hold your team accountable as well. So um, your leadership team is great. What does the accountability look like for their respective teams? And just like any kind of business evaluation, those individuals are tracked against those objectives um, to make sure that we're staying on task. And I, what I'm, you know, worry is a strong word. What I think about is this could get hard with personnel mm -hmm. if there are folks that aren't willing to meet that if things have been done a certain way for so many years mm -hmm. and there's not been a lot of accountability to it or we're asking them to step up at a certain level I mean you know I that's what I'm gonna be kind of watching for because mm -hmm. otherwise this is a really great plan mm -hmm. which I'm sure we can achieve a lot of it we can work towards achieving the other pieces but then like that cultural shift mm. that requires everybody is not going to be achieved and that's what I want to that's what I'm going to be looking for yeah I, well I fully agree with you yeah I mean if um, when we for example had a goal of um, so so in 2015 <clears throat> there were major prereq requirements and uh, assessments that occurred before you were even considered or eligible to take an AP class. You weren't allowed to. And <clears throat> many believed that this notion or idea of we aren't going to have any requirements for eligibility to take an AP class. What? Culturally, you aren't going to be able to do that, Andy. That's not possible. Well, yes, it is. And I think that's what leadership is. And it's done collaboratively and with the staff and building and researching, benchmarking, and learning together and bringing it back to what's best for kids. And if we can do that with integrity, culturally, that's when the, the culture shift happens. And only then does it really happen in practice deeply but it can't if we have too many objectives and are all over the place but nowhere. Yeah. Um, but, but I agree with you at the end of the day, um, you know, we could send that strategic plan off and have 20 experts look at it and maybe they think it's really great, maybe they don't. But that doesn't matter. What matters is our ability to actualize it in meaningful, relevant ways collectively for kids, and that's what you're saying, and I agree with you. And we do need metrics and measures to hold ourselves accountable, myself included. And oh, by the way, Katie, I think you might remember our 2018, uh, November 2018 bond levy. Mm -hmm. There were many that didn't think we would get that done either. That's true. We did. Look at where we are now. Any other questions or comments? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the building and department reports that are found in the packet. Um, any comments or questions on those? Yeah. You're up again. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Superintendent's okay. report. <laughs> OK. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Interestingly, a lot of what I have on this report We've, we've presented on to include strategic plan and Stevenson master plan. Um, one of the things I wanted to spotlight though was, and this is really a celebration um, that I think will, oh, I don't know, fill your heart for lack of a better word. We hosted 400 educators in this building and the renovated high school for a professional development act, uh, uh, day long, uh, um, you know, event. And the space was phenomenal. The feedback we received from teachers that participated across the state was wonderful. And because of the flexibility and seamless access to technology, 
you know, it was just awesome. So, you know, and, and, um, and we had challenges in terms of access because it, it, then the site plan was kind of in disarray, but we made it all work. And so that's kind of a celebration that I wanted to share with you. Oh, before you move on, I forgot to mention this to that point. I had um, a few friends of mine who were just like, I'm in your school. And I was like, isn't she pretty? And they're like, it's amazing. Like, yeah. they, were, they were fall over themselves. I didn't even know that. Now yeah. you look at that. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, the only other thing I'm going to spotlight, because again, much of this was presented on, um, is our spring summer district newsletter will be dropping to residents and mailboxes soon. Great. Any questions? Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, construction progress update with Jay Tabina. Thank you for your patience. No problem. Well, good evening. The, the grass is growing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. The grass is greener on the have, other side. Have a good evening. <laughs> I saw somebody walking across. I that. did too. I, like, oh, I really? just saw that too. I was like, oh, how? That is a reason to pause the You ever board. heard of uh, Spot the Dog? <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, yes. You heard of the robot Spot the Dog? Oh, no. no. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Spot the, the Dog. So there's a company yeah. out of Boston that it's actually Spot the Dog. It's a robot AI dog that has like 360 degree like camera, can detect like heat and movement and even like water movement in like pipes. Hmm. And he can be on like a construction site and he actually walks upstairs, downstairs, over like all of your construction debris, so, and can detect that. So maybe we'll have to get a spot the dog for anybody <laughs> that's walking, walking on our grass. The law, he, yell, he yells at them. <laughs> does, he, does he wear black socks? And then, and then if he triggers somebody, a drone pops out <laughs> and flies over him so it can camera. This is all oh, wow. real. A little technology and construction <laughs> today. It's amazing what's what's going on in uh, in the world of uh, constructive technology. But anyway, so um, yeah, we're we're almost there. We're coming down to it, and um, by the end of this week, all of the pavement will be installed. So um, both the Oakland and the Fairview lot turnarounds will have blacktop, as well as the uh, basketball courts. Next Tuesday, the uh, pavers that are going to match the high school entrance are going to be installed. You see that little depression in the concrete right at the front? That'll be installed. And in the coming weeks, I think that I think in a, m a month from now, July 20th, will be substantially complete. Um, so um, the fence, the black decorative fence that goes um, between the Oakland lot in the basketball court and then along Fairview will be installed. The white fence that's along the neighbor, matching the neighboring property will be installed. We've got some really neat decorative uh, benches that'll go in the big concrete areas. Those, those will be installed as well. Um, on the 28th of June, the um, Mid-States playground equipment is going to, to be installed as well. So by the time you meet, again, is there a July? Okay, so definitely by the <laughs> this this might be this might be it then. So we'll have a uh, oh. yeah. We'll we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll it's back. early in August. Got, it feel yeah, official yeah. enough. So I just thought of that. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> so so anyway, within the next month, by the end of July, all of those um, site furnishings will be installed: trash receptacles, benches, the fencing, um, the playground equipment. It was uh, right now all scheduled to be done for the schedule, and it was, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty neat the way that it came together. Thanks for being accommodating as school let out, and you had that big event, and we were still able to get that stuff done. Um, I think what you'll probably notice out there, there's a lot of massaging that needs to be done between like the the, the grading out there, um, right here up along the building, along Fairview. Um, we still have to we still have to fine tune some of that stuff, mainly up against the building. It was because you know we had to leave it accessible for the school year, and so those are the the final touches. Anything on the exterior? I'll talk a little bit on the the interior here. What we're doing this summer, but anything I'm forgetting? Oh, a flagpole right out front will be installed. 
in July. So. so out there right now, there is a man with his dog on the on grass. The grass. Yeah. Kevin is and it's the is dog it a... that is off leash that I see all over town that drives me. Kevin is going <laughs> to wrestle Your that spot. person. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he be on That's the grass? That's an off-leash German They're Shepherd right. on the school grass. Why would hey, he we be don't, on the grass? We don't need to Nate. I know. Is there a sidewalk <laughs> over there? <laughs> Any dog should know. I, I, I think that dog has been on Facebook a couple of times. It has been. Yeah. <laughs> That's who I thought it was. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, but that's okay. really frustrating. That's okay. It is. That's really yeah. frustrating. We need spots. We talked about this, you yeah, know, and we were like, okay, we got to take the well, fence they, they, down. They kind of, yeah. We'll put some. We'll, we put some rope up and some signs, but obviously, it's not doing doing a complete job. <laughs> but we hope for the best. I mean, it's green, like you said. Yeah. It's, there's mm -hmm. grass. It's uh, good. The, well, yeah, the lights are burning too. So mm -hmm. um, that was oh. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, those, yeah, those light poles. Are it looks really fantastic. Yeah. I mean, big picture, yeah. it looks fantastic. Yep. It really does. We have a few more trees to, to put in up along the building as well, so they're not 100% in either. So, it's been really cool to see the cities put in trees too, and then even in front of the Eddington, there's trees and sod in that mm -hmm. tree lawn. Now it's just making such a difference. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, just to, for your awareness, you know, as we occupied the high school over this over the school year a couple of issues were you know found out a couple of uh, classrooms were replacing the flooring in this summer and then um, still don't quite know the cause because we, we followed all the right processes and we tested the the moisture in the flooring and the water damage event that that had happened and and still post that corrective action there's still moisture in the floor so that floor is being replaced again for a second time it's kind of kind of unfortunate but um you know we're moving forward we're getting it done it'll be done over the school years or over the school over the summer break so that um it's replaced by the start of the school year <coughs> and then uh, you know jim's been working with our team just on on little odds and ends so there are a couple of those things that that we're wrapping up um this summer as well but other than that, we're pretty much there. Can't wait for the playground equipment to go in and uh, the mulch and the gaga pit. And is it? Is that how you say it? Gaga pit? Mm-hmm. Never played it. Oh yeah, it. it's a thing. We have a we could have a tournament. I don't even know how to play it. <laughs> Any questions? The um, you mentioned the floor. Did you mention uh, the cabinetry and stuff? Is that all? Oh uh, yeah. So that was ready to go. This actually this Thursday and Friday, but because of the discovered flooring issue, we're going to um, um, take care of the flooring first. Okay. I think, it, I think that that's the sense. right process, but yeah. it's in hand. You know, it's paid for through the first insurance claim and it's ready to go. It's a two day operation and, and uh, that's going to happen with, with that. And I believe the flooring is um, a week away. They had, they had enough um, in stock, so it's not like we're going to be waiting for the, the that wood luxury vinyl plank to to be installed. So it'll go with that. Okay. Any more questions? Great. Thank you, Jay. Have a good Thank evening. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Good evening. Thanks, okay. Um, the core team committee report. Yeah, I just say really quickly that we've been focusing on some of these. I would say fine tuning issues, things like spigots and bleachers and mm -hmm. projector and things like that. So nothing too big to bring. Yeah, exactly. Today. I think there, there was, they had a leadership retreat, so one meeting didn't happen. Mm. That was typical. So I don't have anything to add to that. All right, Beth. Okay, I have um, just some quick um, financial highlights to share with you um, as of the end of May. Um, so a couple new items on here. So our taxes haven't changed. We got our full settlement um, a couple months ago. Um, our state funding is right on track, 94%. Uh, so we have one month left, um, June, which we've actually received it all by now. Um, the homestead and rollback came in. So you'll notice our taxes were a little bit over what was budget, budgeted. The homestead and rollback was a little bit under. Those two um, components go together in the whole formula. So um, we don't always know exactly the breakdown of who's gonna qualify for those reductions. So 
I budget those together and then estimate the breakout. So it's interesting, one's a little bit over, one's a little bit under. Um, so that's, that is kind of expected. Um, interest, I, I mentioned earlier, so our monthly interest was a little over 61,000 and we're at right at 399,000 of interest earnings um, just in our general fund. Uh, for this fiscal year with one month left to go. So we have really been taking advantage of the um, increased interest rates over the last six months or so, which is great. Um, expenditures, as you guys remember, we have been like almost right on the dot um, several months in a row. Um, we're a hair over um, as of the end of May. And um, so I, I think we'll finish fairly, you know, very, very close to, to our uh, fiscal year budget with one month left. Um, investments, uh, the, the uh, U.S. Bank, the average yield is about 2.6%, and our Star Ohio liquid account is five and a quarter. So that's up from 5.07 as of the end of April. Um, so great opportunity with that Star Ohio. That account is liquid. It's just like a savings account. We can transfer money in and out of there um, on a daily basis um, and earning a, a, a really good yield on that. So our permanent improvement fund, our unencumbered balance is just over 94000 And you can see that the upcoming expenditures, that the things that we have planned are encumbered. Um, so nothing new here. The, the track, of course, that project is being pushed back. Um, but the, the, those funds are still kind of reserved or set aside for that. And I, I feel like the last time we talked about this, do you have any guarantee in place that that cost will, you know, we were ready for it to go this year, that it will remain the same next year? Yeah, I don't think it will remain. Okay. It, in fact, it will not remain exactly the same. What's your time? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, yes, there will be a, a process where we, um, you know, work that out. Uh, the construction fund, our May interest earnings were about 13600 and our project to date, um, $1,981,000. So we're getting really, really close as we're winding down, getting really close to that $2 million mark. Um, soft costs were at 89.5%, um, and construction costs almost 98%. The fund balance in our construction fund is just over $2 million. Um, and we did have another uh, request come in just in the last couple of days, so we'll be um, making a payment for, I think it was May's work, um, coming up in the coming weeks. The investment account, there's one final security in the, the construction fund investment account, and it actually has matured just in the last week. So there was one $200,000 maturity left. Uh, that account will be closed, will be completely closed out um, by the end of July with the residual interest earnings on that transferred into the Star Ohio account. Um, so no significant update here. Um, so that is um, pretty much all I have, unless you have any questions. Questions? Oh, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Do you have a finance committee report? I think the big thing that we focused on are some of these options um, for the future for uh, bond issues. So we're developing that. Beth has done a great job of developing some options, and at some point we'll be talking more about that. But not today. But not today. <laughs> okay. Other than that, I was like, we could have. It was actually pretty straightforward the last meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't get off track at all. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to. Uh, Business and finance recommendations for approval. We have C1 through 17. So moved. Second. I do want to call attention to the amazing, wonderful donations in number 17 mm -hmm. uh, for the health and wellness center equipment. I mean, just so incredibly grateful for the Bobcat Boosters and all the athletic boosters teams that uh, donated because. I haven't been to see it, but I heard from Jason Peters that it is amazing. So kids love it. Yeah, they love it. That's great. It's great that there's different groups involved too. Some yeah. good coordination there. There are even a few more internal groups that have fundraising accounts on our books um, that aren't outside donations reflected here that contributed to. So the list is even a little bit longer. Interesting. Yeah. 
And if we, that's been moved and seconded, but I do want to draw attention to item number 10. Yeah. We talked mm -hmm. about it in May, mm -hmm. but this will officially go on the books that we are increasing lunch prices. We have talked about it, but just to note that mm -hmm. that's, that's in there. Well, and I asked uh, Beth prior to the start of this meeting if, because it was in the minutes from the last weekend that we discussed it, if anyone has reached out and she's heard feedback and she said that she has not. Have any of you heard any feedback? Mm -hmm. No. no. All right, and we talked about the importance of making sure that this gets, gets out there. All the information gets out there to everyone to make sure that they're aware before the beginning of school year. And just a reminder, is it an increase of about 25 cents to a dollar? It's 25 cents for elementary and then 50. 50 cents was one of them. 50 cents for middle school and high school. Yeah. Oh, 50 both, cent, yeah. So a 50 cent yeah. increase, and the last time there was an increase was like nine years ago? Maybe 18 It's been years. at least 16 years. 16 years. Um, the last two food service directors, there's been one increase in 16 plus years. Well, I think I was looking at, I was reading the minutes that we just approved and it's then those minutes said 18 years. Yeah, 18. I thought it was 18. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But there will be in the, there will be some kind of very, I wanna say specific lunch only update to the community that this is going out, or can there be? There's a question. I think there can be. I feel, like it, I feel like it rises to a level where I just want to make sure people yeah. are aware. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're sending something out. Yeah. But yeah. singularly lunch yeah, singularly. is not. Okay, yeah. that was. We're working with Kyle Mahan, Perfect. The director of food services, to draft a little bit of history information mm -hmm. and why. Great. Yep. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Beth, I have a question about um, the donations. I know the football boosters, Touchdown Club, made a donation as well. I don't see it reflected. I just want to make sure you guys got it. Um, I, I would double. Ch I, I will double check on that. It's possible it could have came in after the cutoff time, or it might have been on the previous. Uh, let me check on that, okay, Katie, and I'll just, get back to you. Okay, thank you. I wondered what athletic uh, boosters. Were. Okay, so that a athletic well, boosters is actually. Okay. Oh, A is touchdown club. So 17A is where it says athletic boosters is actually the touchdown okay. club. Okay. Catch. You're two for two. Yes. Any other uh, questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then, Beth, could you please call the roll? Mr. Bodie. Aye. Mrs. Gebhardt. Aye. Mr. Gousset. Aye. Mrs. Matney. Aye. Ms. Wasmuth. Aye. Moving on to section 10 personnel, we have uh, sections A1 through, gosh, there's a lot here. One through 21. So moved. <clears throat> I'll second. Any questions or comments? All right, Beth, could you please call the roll? Mr. Bodie. Aye. Mrs. Gebhardt. Aye. Mr. Gousset. Aye. Mrs. Matney. Aye. Ms. Wasmith. Aye. Okay, do we have a policy committee report? Uh, we met for our quarterly policy update uh, recently, and you can see on here listed under uh, the items, the different policies. This is a first read. Um, nothing was of much note uh, in terms of there was there were no real decisions to be made. There were a couple of policies that were um, recommendations rather than required. I think all of which we accepted. The wording was pretty pretty basic. Um, and if anybody has any questions about those, no general change to policy, more just like language updates. Yes. Okay. Yeah, like it didn't actually make right. a true, it's just more language change. Than yeah. Correct. Okay. So um, then under there, those board policies under B1 there are all just a first reading today. Correct. So we will vote on those next time. In August? Uh, in August, I suppose, yes. The, the one caveat I might add, if I may, sure. is um, <clears throat> we did revisit a policy around outdoor athletic space. Mm -hmm that was not part of the PDQ. And we did that because there have been a few instances uniquely in the last year that we've not faced the previous eight with community members using the track in particular during track practice. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> there's been some questions around what our board policy was and how clear it was stated in the board policy around a community member's ability to do that. And so we have updated this policy to more 
accurately reflect that during a track practice, community members shouldn't be using the track. That's fair. Yeah. Will that be posted on? And we've ordered, and yeah. have we hung? I know the signs are in. Whether they're hanging yet, I don't know. Ooh, New signage? signs out there that reflect this change. They'll, they'll be posted on the website if we accept that policy That's change. That's correct. That's After, correct. Like Paulson. today's the first the track read. have a large dog. No. Was I was actually going to say, was it on leash or off leash? <laughs> there was no dog to my knowledge. <laughs> I like how you qualify that to my knowledge. <laughs> I've seen plenty of dogs in the stadium, though, too. I, I might have run the stadium stairs with my dog. I, can't, I cannot say a thing. Okay, moving on to curriculum and instruction, section 12. Um, is there a teaching and learning committee report? There's not. There's not, okay. So moving on to B, recommendations for approval. We have B1 and 2. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? This is, oh, no, you go. This is um, the stuff that Mrs. Olam mm -hmm. presented mm -hmm. in right. May. Yes. <coughs> now, now we're asking to say yay or right, nay. Right, the decodable text, okay. yeah. Um, were there any changes to the handbook? There were, like, within the, within the minutes, but they were not a major note. This, I was like, language, just nothing. Yeah. Like, we didn't decide to adopt a dress code, nothing like that. No. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Oh, yeah, we're wearing uniforms next year. No. No, 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 no. That was a joke. No, 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 no. Right. Not serious. My soul just clenched a little bit. Went, oh, please. Yeah. Okay, anyway, Beth, could you please call the roll? Mr. Bodie. Aye. Mrs. Uh, Gephardt. Aye. Mr. Gousset. Aye. Mrs. Matney. Aye. Ms. Wassmith. Aye. All right, section 13. Um, is there a motion for to approve A1 through, just one, <laughs> just A1? So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay, Beth, can you please call the roll? Mr. Bodie. Aye. Mrs. Gephardt. Aye. Mr. Gousset. Aye. Mrs. Matney. Aye. Ms. Wasmith. Aye. All right, we already um, addressed the library issues under other. So um, final, well, seemingly final item on our agenda is section 15. Um, it would be new contracts for the superintendent and treasurer. Is there a motion to approve these? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? Just appreciation. Yep, yeah. we love we, you. <laughs> we have, uh, I was like, you're through 2029, so. Yep. That's exciting. I'm excited to have you all for the next mm -hmm. five, six, seven, eight years. Whatever. Well, look at listening to like strategic planning and Stevenson planning, I mean, like, we got a lot ahead of us. We do. Yeah. It's ex it really is exciting. It's exciting. The this is going to sound a little bit personal. The year 2029. I'm like, you're going to watch my child walk across the stage. Oh. So I'm not going to cry because right. I'm not oh, going to yeah. think about you're it. Right. But I was like, I, the mom in me is, I'm happy to have you oh, two yeah. at the home, and I'm going to not cry. Oh, While nice. my child walks through. <laughs> Steve, oh no, no. I'm gonna, I was like through school. I'm happy to have you guys. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that, that year caught me. I was like, mm. we have four kids walking across the stage. Yes. That's right. That's I'm right. the only one that brought it up. Just so right. I know. I mean, you made me tear up. Oh, yeah. It doesn't take a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to think about that, like, post-graduation <laughs> get-together, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be cause for That's going to be a party. <laughs> That's right. I think the whole staff will be like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll through all four How about those. Anna? Are you nervous? Because <laughs> no. we're all watching you. That yeah. math teacher, she literally was like, are you nervous? The fact no, that she I'm called not. you, I'm going to say. I like that. that when she called you out, I'm like, she's, she's Is that what she she's said? Fine. Did she not say that? Yes, yes, she did. I thought she did. I mean, she's ready yeah, for the she's like ready to go. I loved it. I don't know if, she, well, I have a lot of snarky comments to make that I will not. <laughs> about the right now, 2029. <laughs> we love them. Mm -hmm. We have four of them. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, in any case, let's vote on this. <laughs> so let's vote. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Can you please call the roll. Mr. Bodie? Aye. Mrs. Gephardt? Aye. Mr. Gousset? Aye. Mrs. Matney? Aye. Ms. Wasmuth? Aye. Have we any other items for discussion? Please no. No, and there is no executive session needed this evening. So can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. Beth, can you please call the roll? Mr. Bodie? Aye. Mrs. Gephardt? Aye. Sorry. Mr. Gousset? <laughs> Aye. Mrs. Matney? Aye. And Ms. Wasmuth? Aye. There it is. I didn't think that was.